Imam al-Hasan al-Basri, rahimahullah ta'ala, narrates. He says, Ayat Aad Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, Ma'qil ibn Yasar al-Muzani, radiyallahu anhu, fi maradihi alladhi mata fihi. Faqala Ma'qil, inni muhaddithuka hadithan sami'tuhu min rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. ولو علمت أن لي حياة ما حدثتك إني سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول ما من عبد يسترعيه الله رعية يموت يوم يموت وهو غاش لهم إلا حرم الله عليه الجنة وفي رواية لمسلم ولم يجهد لهم وينصح This is Imam al-Hasan al-Basri, the Imam of Basra, rahimahullah, narrates. He says, the governor of al-Basra, Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, who is known for excessive bloodshed. He comes to visit the great companion, Ma'qil ibn Yasar al-Muzani, radiyallahu anhu, when he was on his deathbed. He comes to visit him, check on him. Ma'aqil ibn Yasar says to him, I shall share with you something I heard directly from Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Had I known I would live longer, I would not have told you about this. I would not have shared this with you. If I knew I were to live longer than that, I would not have shared that with you now. I heard Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, there is no servant, there is no slave, there is no human being that Allah entrusts with him, or obviously her as well, people under their charge, under their responsibility. And when, the, when their death or the day of their death comes about, they, are in a, they have not fulfilled the responsibility. They have not taken good care of those under their charge, under their responsibility. They have not fulfilled that obligation towards those under their care. Or they have not done a good job towards those under their care. So they have cheated them. They have shortchanged them. Except that Allah will make prohibited for them Jannah. Allah will prevent them. Allah will deny them entering Jannah. And in the narration, the wording of one of the wordings in Al Imam Muslim, in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet says, if this person who's in charge dies and they have not exerted themselves and done everything that they could that is in favor and in the interest of those under their charge, except that Allah will make Jannah, will make Jannah haram for them. So today, it's gonna be, the khutbah is gonna be a little bit straightforward. And we might find this a little bit challenging and uncomfortable, but let it be. Let's go to the story and the context. So we have this great companion, Ma'qil ibn Yasar radiyallahu anhu. He's on his deathbed. The governor, Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, who was known, as we said, for excessive bloodshed, extreme violence, and tyranny. Like at the slightest sign or doubt, he would shed the blood of a person or a people. He had an iron fist. He governed with, a, with an iron fist. So he comes to visit this companion. And he thought he was extremely ill. So he comes to check on him. But the companion of the Prophet ﷺ does not play politics here. He's not diplomatic. He says it straight. He says, I want to share with you something I heard from Allah's Messenger ﷺ. And it's going to be extremely uncomfortable to this person. 
And he tells him why he's telling him this or he's sharing this hadith with him now at this moment. He said, if I knew I was to, that I were to live longer, I would not have shared that with you because I would fear for my life. I know you are unjust. I know that you would oppress me. I know that you would take that personally and you would not take the advice. But since I feel that my time is over, I'm going to tell that to your face. I'm going to say it right in your face. I heard Allah's Messenger وسلم, say any person that Allah entrusts to be in charge of people, a group of people or even one person and the death of this person, the last day in their, day, in, in their life comes and this person has not done a good job that Allah will make Jannah haram for them. That's scary. And this doesn't only apply to governors, presidents, heads of state. It applies to any person in a position of responsibility. And I want to emphasize today something that is more relevant to our times, to our personal life. And that's parents. So parents, bear with me. Today is going to be tough for all of us. Because this hadith, this hadith should be a wake-up call. As parents, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala entrusted us with the welfare of our children. And when I say the welfare and the well-being of our children, I'm not talking about, primarily, I'm not talking about their clothing and their activities and sports and their luxury. I'm talking about their heart, their well-being, their connection to Allah. The right to know, to understand, to be taught the truth and to be guided to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To be given a fair chance to know the truth and understand the reality of this life. And know why they were created and what they, were supposed to, what they are supposed to do with their life. That's our responsibility. The school will not take that burden off your shoulders. The masjid will not, take it, will not take that burden off your shoulders. The Qur'an teachers are not going to take that off your shoulders. Allah will hold you accountable. Because Allah says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا قُوْ أَنفُسَكُمْ وَأَهْلِيكُمْ نَارًا وَقُودُهَا النَّاسُ وَالْحِجَارًا O you who believe, protect yourselves and your families. Family here means your spouse, your children and anyone under your care. Protect them from the hellfire. That's your responsibility. So if any parent has not exerted themselves and done everything they could, and sometimes we underestimate what we can. We have this bias. We want to give ourselves an excuse. If you have not done your best or the best possible in your situation, Allah will hold you accountable. It might be that you will be denied paradise. It's not a joke. And you could come up with excuses. You know, I have a lot of responsibilities. I'm so busy. I have to do this. I have to do that. I'm working two jobs. Oh, the way the system here, the way the system wor here works does not allow me to spend time with, with my kids, to take care of them. What your ki kids get taught in school what they get exposed to on so in social media, on all of these devices, on the internet in general, and any media. That's your responsibility. You're going to be held accountable for that. And if you have not done your best, and you need to be careful to really assess what your best means. Because again, shaitan will always whisper into our hearts to try to give us excuses why we're not fulfilling the responsibility. Because he wants to take the children astray. And he's working on them at, the, at a parallel path. And he's working on you as well. And he's working on society as well. So what you kids get fed, what they get taught, what they get exposed to, the influence 
that they undergo. Don't think that's not your responsibility. It's your responsibility. And Allah will hold you accountable. If you want to lie to yourself, if you just want to try to pass the buck, you can fool yourself here. But with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everything will be brought. Everything will be brought. The scales of Allah are true. You can come up with excuses. You can make up a story now to make yourself, to sedate yourself and make yourself feel better. And you think you have excuses. Oh, that's all I can do. But these will fall apart when you stand before Allah on the day of judgment. That's your responsibility. Your spouse, the spiritual, religious well-being of your spouse is also your responsibility. And Allah is going to hold you accountable. So take your parenthood or this position as a parent, take it seriously. There's no joke here. There's no joke. Stop all of the intoxication and the distraction you know, that we are immersed in with all of this social media, social connections, or any other engagement that is taking our attention from fulfilling our responsibility towards our children, towards the younger generation, towards our spouses, towards ourselves. Get rid of all of that. Make an inventory. Are you really fulfilling your responsibility? Will you have an answer to offer on the day of judgment that will free you from that severe punishment and that is denial to enter, of entering paradise? So that's parenthood. You can apply that to other areas in your life. Any position of responsibility you are in. You are a manager. You are a head of department. You are a CEO. You are a supervisor. And you are abusing your authority. Or you are not doing what's in the best interest of those under your care. You think you can get away with that power? With these power games? Allah is going to hold you accountable. And the price might be Jannah. The price might be Jannah. And this is why life is a serious business. And a lot of what we have, a lot of the distractions, a lot of the social media, a lot of the entertainment that we have around, a lot of the ambitions and the goals that, we, that get communicated to us, that we swallowed onto this machine of, of, of wealth and, and, and love of life and capitalism and consumerism, all of that is taking our attention from seeing the truth. It stops us from calling a spade a spade and seeing things for what they are in, their, in our lives. So we are intoxicated. We're intoxicated. We don't see the truth. We don't see where we stand. So we don't take corrective steps. We don't take action to fix things with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the price for that is going to be extreme regret and pain on the day, on the day of death. It's going to, a person is going to wake up, but that would be too late. It would be too late then. So what we need to do is to take our responsibility. Take it seriously. That what our children learn, what they are exposed to, what they get fed, the influences they're going through, or that they are experiencing, we are responsible for them. We're responsible for them. And you say, oh, it's the school, I can't do anything about it. It's society, I can't do anything about it. It is social media, I can't take the devices from my children. I can't deny them, you know, access to all of this stuff. What can I do? My hands are tied. Well, you can play that game and feel good about yourself for a short while. But when the truth hits, you're going to experience a lot of pain. Don't fool yourself. Don't let shaitan fool you and blind you to the truth. Any person who Allah places in a place or in a spot of responsibility, and on the day they die, 
They have not fulfilled that responsibility. They have cheated. Look at the wording the Prophet ﷺ said. Yamutu yawma yamutu wa huwa ghashun lahum. The person dies, he has cheated. He has shortchanged those. Because when you are in a position of responsibility, many people crave that responsibility or that leadership, thinking it's an honor. But the Prophet ﷺ told Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu about leadership about positions of leadership. He said, لا تتأمرنا على اثنين Do not seek leadership. Do not take leadership. Even if it's over two people. Another narration, the Prophet ﷺ says, إنها أمانة وإنها يوم القيامة حسرة وندامة It is a huge burden and responsibility and on the day of judgment, it will be a source of regret and pain and remorse. So responsibility is not an honor, it's not a privilege. It's an extreme challenge. And sometimes we voluntarily seek out that kind of challenge, but sometimes it is just part of our life as a parent. So what you need to do is, because you will find many people, you know, prophesizing and coming up with solutions for the problem of poverty in the world, right? And they, they will, Talk about public policy, foreign policy. They, they have solutions for everything in the world. But look at their life. Look at their family. Look at their children. They leave their responsibility and they waste their time talking about something that Allah will not ask them about. Before you, before you start prophesizing and philosophizing about problems that are beyond your circle of responsibility, Fulfill your responsibility first, because that's a distraction from shaitan. That's a distraction from shaitan. Work on what Allah is going to ask you about, first and foremost. When you are in good shape there, then you can expand your responsibility voluntarily and offer your help. So let's take heed of this and hold ourselves responsible, because no sweet words no euphemism is going to make this easy. It's only the truth and telling the truth and accepting the truth with humility and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us handle it. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وبعد We said previously that this life is a test and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised that this life will have its share of challenges trials, hardships it doesn't mean you lose heart the dominant culture today in the world promotes entertainment, enjoyment, pursuit only of wealth and fake happiness. And people keep, people stay stuck for most of their life trying to pursue a mirage, a delusion. This life is designed, is created to test us to challenge us, to squeeze us, to crush us. It's not designed for pleasure. There will be pleasures in it, but the pleasures are not goals on their own. They don't have any intrinsic value of their own. They're just part of life. They're part of the grace of life. There's ups and downs. So don't get attached too much to this life. You are here renting your spot in this life. You're literally renting. So don't think you're going to reside forever. Don't act as if you're going to reside forever. You're here for a short period of time. And nothing you have belongs to you. Nothing. Nothing. And soon you will leave this world. Only taking yourself out. Only. And you will leave everything behind. Everything you call mine. And many things that you call you think are you. Many people think their wealth, their wealth is who they are. Their car is who they are. 
Their reputation is who, you, who they are. Their looks and appearance is who, who they are. But all of that is borrowed stuff. None of that is yours. The only thing that was given to you and will remain with you is your heart. Your heart, your deeds. And that's what you're going to leave this life with. That's it. That's, that's the only thing you're going to take out of that life. So take care of that. Everything else, don't get attached to it. It's utility. Use it. Utilize it. Benefit from it. Put it to good use. Good use meaning something that will bring you closer to Allah. Something that will, be in, something that will make a good contribution. That's it. Forget about reputation. Forget about how people see you. How people think about you. Forget about what you possess. Forget about the beauty of your clothes. All of that is going to come to pass. Look at previous nations. Kings, ministers, rich people, strong people, tyrants. Where are they? They're all gone. They're all gone. We are going to be gone as well. But that's the delusion of life. It seems to be everlasting and eternal as we are dealing with it. Why? Because it constricts us. We become completely absorbed in the moment. And it seems as though it's going to last forever. But nothing lasts forever. Nothing in the creation lasts forever. Everything is going to come to an end. Your health will go. Look around and see any person who is struggling with their health. You think they've been like that all their life? No, in their youth, they probably were the most athletic, fit person. You think you're safe from that? There will be moments where the gifts of Allah will be taken away from you as a trial, as a test.